Hello there and welcome to Complete Games. I'm James and this is the Explorer Note read-through for Santiago on Extinction. If you haven't already seen part one, then I'll leave a link in the top right hand corner, but we continue. And when we left off, Santiago was interviewing potential pilots and evaluating some of the team to see who would be most suitable to operate his new machines and take on the Titans. So sit back, relax and enjoy part two of Santiago's Explorer Notes on Extinction. Mech pilot evaluation, candidate 013, Helena Walker. This one caught me off guard. I knew from experience that Helena could handle herself in a crisis and improvise quickly, and she did well enough on the interview. Creative, level-headed, not much of a killer instinct, but we don't need four May Yins. So she was solid, but not spectacular. At least until we hooked her up in the prototype and looked at her synchronization ratings. She had every gauge maxed out. It's as if her nervous system is more advanced than everyone else's, like it can just process information at a higher rate. I wonder, could she open a neural link with even more advanced technology? Maybe that's a question for another time, but for now, I think I found my second pilot. Mech pilot evaluation, candidate 022, Takaya Kazuma. URE luggerheads like Kazuma are why I had no problem helping the Tron Federation. Loud, obnoxious, self-righteous and above all naive. He struggled making tough calls in the interview because he didn't think we should have to make sacrifices. It's a cute statement, but we're trying to survive here. I've got to walk the talk though. His memories may end just after the academy, but he's one of our few assets left with any real military training. Sync scores are solid too. Loudmouth, URE, zealot or not, he might be the best remaining option. My personal bias is irrelevant. Mech pilot evaluation, final candidate, Santiago. Outside of testing, I rarely want to use anything I engineer. Part of it is that my ideas are never really as exciting to me once they're realised. Like I got it out of my system. But I also think it just ruins the purity of it. Great painters don't hang their own work on the wall, do they? Unfortunately, this time I don't have a choice. I know the mech's better than anyone, and only Elena has a better sync rating. That's probably because I tested the synchronisation system on myself. Stupid mistake. Looks like my workload just doubled. Now that the construction has reached phase 3, I need to have a lot more face time with our top candidates. The mechs will still be usable by anyone, but if we can get them specifically tuned to their primary pilot's preferences and behaviours, we can maximise their combat efficiency. Plus, they have to get used to actually controlling them. Not really looking forward to this part. I'm kind of the guy who can't help but take the wheel after 30 seconds of watching someone struggle with a computer console. And these are my greatest creations, not an internet browser. Could get painful. May Yin's taken the longest to get used to her cockpit. Understandable, since there's not even a word for it in ancient Chinese. Luckily her endurance lets her practice for longer intervals, so she'll catch up eventually. Our sessions are also the quietest. You'd think we'd have more of a rapport by now, but Dai was always our mutual connection. So with Mei Yin it's all business, even if she's struggling or I start to get impatient. The only time she went off topic was when she invited me to work out, and since I'm a pilot now I agreed. My legs regretted it afterwards, but our next session went far better. Not friendlier, not chattier, just smoother. It's like we've reached some strange, silent, anti-social understanding. I'm not sure I get it, but I guess I don't mind. Helena's sessions have become an exercise in frustration. Her synchronization never drops a single grade. And when I explain what she's doing wrong, she understands. But for some reason, she just hit a wall when it comes to execution. She's working as hard as anyone, and she's so damned earnest about wanting to help out that I kind of regret being short with her. I've even tried to hide how far behind she's fallen. Maybe she needs to focus on something external, like a carrot on a stick. She's always talking about how she wants to find the truth behind those stations, and my scanners picked up an unusual signal the other day. I'm no one's idea of a life coach, but I think that may do the trick. The carrot worked pretty well. As soon as I mentioned the signal I detected in the waste, it was like a second reactor started up in Helena's brain. The signal's not even a sure bet, just a vague chance at finding some answers. But she leapt at it. I got caught up in her enthusiasm and ended up saying more than I intended though. I hadn't meant to bring up the clone situation or whether we were responsible for our past lives, but maybe I needed to get it off my chest. Not sure it helped. Anyway, by our next mech session, Helena was back on track. In hindsight, seems like it was a confidence issue. 
like she convinced herself that her sync rating is a fluke, better tone down the criticism for a bit. If nothing else, my own sessions have been a moment of peace. I still don't want to pilot one of my own masterpieces in combat, but when it's just me and my mech in the hangar, I feel like I can finally relax. It's not just that I've been working long hours. I did plenty of times on the Gateway Project and our tech bomb before then. It's that I'm working long hours and dealing with people at the same time, all the time. The piloting sessions have been getting better, but running everything else on top of that. Santiago, a water pipe broke. Santiago, so and so is hogging all the ammo. Maybe I'll just hide in the cockpit and nap for a while. No one would know. It should just work. The mech's power systems fuse perfectly during my teleportation sims, so why does the reactor keep spluttering? The errors I'm getting don't make any sense, but if I ignore them, they'll turn out to be right. The fusion process could end in a catastrophic reactor meltdown. Unbelievable. Here of all places is where I screw up. The most critical juncture in this entire damned enterprise. I'd never make a mistake like this back home, but maybe that's because the original Santiago was better than I am. If I'm just a crude approximation, then some degradation would... No. I'm fixing this, just like I always have. Simulation 15-7B was another failure. Error 612A4, same as always. Almost no change in the reactor coupling. I've had projects fail, but not like this. Not this spectacularly. Just inches from the finish line. Why'd it have to be this one? This is the pierced resistance of my lifelong resume. It's the thing that will wipe my whole ledger clean. It needs to work. Or my legacy is this dead hunk of rock orbiting the sun. 30 more simulations. I can get 30 more simulations in before I need sleep. If I can just get a different error code, then I can start to isolate the variables involved. Just give me something to go on here. Anything at all. I can't believe those idiots did something so cheesy. I really want to hate them for it. I'm not sure what simulation I was on when I finally crashed, but I woke up to Elena and Kazuma dragging me off to deal with some emergency. If I wasn't still half asleep, I'd have probably have realised that they were full of it. But as it was, I didn't catch on until I saw the cake. We can't really tell what day it is, but I guess everyone decided that today was June 26th, my birthday. According to them, that meant I couldn't work. I had to eat that crappy cake and have fun. Kill me. Fine, the cake wasn't that bad. And maybe it was a little fun. Can't even tell them that though. My reputation would be shot. Those idiots. I can't believe that the solution to the energy flow problem was so basic. After being held hostage by the birthday committee for a day, I figured it out within a few hours of getting back to work. It turns out all I really needed to do was step back and get a new perspective on it. Everything's been going better since then. Actually, pilot training is nearly complete. We've assembled most of the parts and the whole team is working at peak efficiency. Even Kazuma didn't want to make me throttle him for a change. Don't get me wrong, these guys are still a bunch of corny idiots. They're just my corny idiots, that's all. With the mechs entering their final phase of construction, I've decided to give our pilot team a little reward and simulate the Mega Mech Fusion procedure. We won't be able to do it for real for another couple of weeks, but this sim is pretty accurate. It went a lot better than I expected. By our third try, we had it down pat. The only thing that held us up was a lot of joking about who would control which body part. Mei Ying Paintly refused to switch off of the sword arm and Elena was convinced that she'd trip us up if she took the legs. I know it goes against my principles as an engineer, but after that, I think I'm actually expected to pilot this thing. Purity be damned. It's too soon. They found us too soon. Those big monsters we saw, the ones that promoted this whole mech project in the first place. There's some of them heading towards Camp Omega, and they're bringing a legion of help. Mechanised drones, mutated animals, the works. We're moving as fast as we can. But even working around the clock, we may have to face them down with just one mech active. Two tops. The others will be close, but we can't skimp on the final boot-up procedure without endangering the pilot. I know those three would be willing to risk that, but I'm not. Why did it have to be now? Another half day and we'd be able to link up. We were that close. One mech, that's all we've got. And it's only because I've been using my own machine for beta testing. There's no way I can take all of them, even with infantry support. But if I launch now and get their attention, I can lead them on a chase until the others are ready to go. It's a shame. We don't have the resources to replace my mech, and without it my final masterpiece will never take shape. I'd have liked to have seen it, but more than that, I'd have liked to have experienced that moment where we all fused together for real, and our bizarre little squad became the most powerful team the world's ever seen. But if it means giving those idiots a chance to survive this, 
then I'll give it all up, because in the end, those are my ideas. And that concludes the note read-through for Santiago on Extinction. Of course, we're going to continue the note read-through, and next time I'll be bringing you the notes from Mei Yin. Before that, though, I do want to finish off Scorched Earth. We have got to fight the Manticore and ascend from that map. Well... Let's say Ascend, but we do have to complete that map. I've also been doing a new series, Valheim, as well. Very much enjoying that game, so there'll be a little bit more content on that. As always, thank you very much for all of the comments and support on the videos. I really appreciate it. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games, and I'll see you.